Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I've been using 2017's Ryzen 5 1600 for the past few days outside of making videos and testing graphics cards. This 14 nanometer Zen based 6 core 12 thread AM4 processor first launched at 219 US dollars before getting a 12 nanometer Zen Plus refresh and being relaunched in late 2019 for just 85. The newer version ended up beating both the original 1600 and 1600X and is still the one to buy if you can find it. Look for the letters AF instead of AE at the end of the serial number printed right on the CPU. As you can see the chip I'm using today is the older AE version which is arguably more common on the used market. These are going for silly money at the moment, I'm talking less than £50 here in the UK. I got this one boxed with the original cooler, or a cooler, anyway, I think it's the Ryzen 5000 series cooler, because that's the box it came in, but it cost me just £45. I used this very cooler to overclock it to 3.8GHz with 1.35V, and this is helping us get the most out of this legendary processor in a few of my favourite games. I also have it paired with 16 gigs of 3200 MHz DDR4 and my trusty Palette RTX 3050. Now it can still offer up a good experience as far as I'm concerned and of course being on the AM4 platform you could slap it in a basic and cheap motherboard, use it for a while and still have an upgrade path to go down if and when you wanted to. It is best overclocked and I will say right now that one of the biggest issues you'll face are with the frame times. Average frame rates are mostly solid but it won't always deliver a consistent experience in the newest games. I remember owning one ages ago and for my content creation needs it was brilliant. That said, I believe it was the Ryzen 3600 that was the first true all-rounder, at least in my opinion. That was equally as impressive in games as it was at CPU intensive tasks. The Ryzen 1600 here made more sense from a purely content focused perspective to me. Now don't get me wrong, my game still ran great, but it was when I was editing videos or rendering HD clips that this seemed most at home. If we look at a couple of CPU related benchmarks then this will give you a good idea of where it fits in these days. The overclocked 1600 is definitely holding its own as far as that practical real world render test goes in my opinion and it still feels okay to use in things like DaVinci Resolve to preview, cut and render my projects. We're definitely getting £50 worth of performance from it that's for sure. Overclocking one of these is certainly the way to go in 2023 as it will bring it more in line with the stock 1600 AF or 2600. Now having said that I've actually seen a lot of 2600s on the used market that cost the same as their predecessor making them a more sensible purchase but only if the price difference is minimal where you live and the processors themselves aren't way more scarce. Let's talk more in depth about my gaming experience today though. I used my 3050 which is more than enough for the 1600 to stretch its legs. The card was being held back most of the time, less in some cases than in others. Focusing on the gaming and we're almost through with the cyberpunk footage, the limitations of the 1600 will be apparent in busier areas filled with NPCs and crowd density is best reduced to low to try and alleviate some of the slowdown. A lot of the time though, it's fine. The CPU won't necessarily read 100% usage on the top left overlay even if it is the limiting factor so the clue is with the GPU usage. The graphics card won't often be fully utilised though the usage will vary depending on where we are and what we're doing in certain games. You might find that in busy areas or just generally more CPU intensive games like Spider-Man here the graphics card will sit at around 70-80% to usage, maybe less because the processor is the weak point so to speak. That definitely isn't true across all our games by any means but it will be hit and miss for the first gen Ryzen. CSGO next and there's nothing to worry about, this is running fine with a few drops as per usual. Not mega high frame rates here by any means but if you've got a small budget to spend and want to play Counter Strike on the 6 core 1600 you can do so with ease and it's certainly pushing higher numbers than it would be at stock speeds out of the box. We had no real trouble hitting the 60fps cap in Elden Ring, saying that though we averaged 59. I have noticed with other older CPU architectures before, um, usually much older than this, that this game can struggle. Now, there were a few little drops every so often which wouldn't have occurred with the RTX 3050 and a faster processor, so the CPU is to blame here, but I mean there were no real issues at all. 
I'd probably call the 1600 one of the weakest CPUs you should go for in 2023 if you want to play every modern game. If you want very cheap but still mostly capable, this might be just what you're looking for. The first gen Ryzen 3s lack SMT so they're not that good anymore but a 6 core 12 threaded 1000 series might very well be worth it especially if you're opting for a more budget focused build. In Forza Horizon 5 there were no problems, the 3050 was actually fully utilised so the CPU got a bit of a break. This is a very well optimised game and in an ideal world all titles would run like this and would give older hardware less issues. I do honestly think that bad optimization will be the downfall of a lot of older hardware these days. It's not just that games get too demanding for older tech, it's that games aren't always in the best state these days upon release and it's users of weaker hardware that will suffer most when they really shouldn't have to. That's not true of Forza at all, of course, because it runs like a dream. Hogwarts Legacy, on the other hand, yeah, it's okay. The CPU does far better outside of Hogsmeade and actually holds up way better in the forest. If you're buying one of these CPUs, then you are probably going for a weaker graphics card, so that might hit its performance limit before the processor itself. I'll probably do a Ryzen 1600 and GTX 1060 build or something, because I think that would probably make for a nice sort of minimum spec PC you should build in 2023 video. I thought for sure Red Dead Redemption 2 would suffer more, or our CPU would suffer more, I should say, especially in and around Valentine because this can be a more CPU intensive area, but everything was fine. This looks and runs great at 1080p with ultra textures and everything else on medium. This is a slightly older title, so that helps I guess, but it can certainly put lower end hardware through its paces, even in 2023. Now finally we have Fortnite, and I can't help but feel that this should have done better, especially as the 1060 ran this at high with a similar frame rate yesterday. Maybe this is a CPU architecture thing because there doesn't seem to be a CPU bottleneck here, um, but the 3050 can usually handle more. So that said, it's still playable and we're exceeding 60 FPS, but I can't complain too much. I'm just not really understanding the performance in this one. For the £45 I spent on the Ryzen 5 1600, I can't really complain at all. It is still fairly capable, and if you can find a cheap motherboard and cheap RAM to pair it with, you might just have the starting point for a super cheap gaming rig, as well as a super cheap editing one, but let me know what you think of this processor down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know what you think of the Ryzen 5 1600 and whether of course you do still own one in 2023, be it the AE, the first edition, or the AF, the 12 nanometer second edition chip, both of them are pretty decent and once you've overclocked the standard 1600, it's going to perform pretty similar to the AF version, until you overclock that one of course. All that's left to say is thank you again for watching, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and you want to of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.